Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight to talk about the topic of cover letters and uh, how to make the hook and uh, what, what is a hook and how can you make it and what's most effective, what works and doesn't work. My name is Jody Hammer, and I'm the Career Services Specialist for the NPCA, National Peace Corps Association, and I work in the Global Reentry Program. So my job is to help you all get, uh, get jobs. So I'm happy to be here tonight and talk about this concept. Um, we really wanna take your questions. So I do have some screenshots to share. Um, I'm going to be some slides that I'll be going through and some of them um, I have shared in a previous, um, the basic covered letter one, and I'll just be going through them a little quicker. And I really wanna focus though more this talk on the hook, right? The whole concept of what is a hook and how can you make an effective hook to really grab the attention of the person who's um, who's reading your cover letter because that is super important, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and start here. Um, so starting with our cover letters required, right? Now, um, I, I, I want to ask you first, I mean, what your opinion is, if you if you have an opinion on this, um, are cover letters required or do you do you do a cover letter generally? Um, and you can just drop that in the in the chat box is fine or even, you know, in the like participants where you can just um, put your hand up, you know, raise a hand or whatever to um, can let us know. So just to see what what people think of this, um, those of you who know me. Yes. Okay, Rachel. Yes, they're required. Well, the, partly correct. Yes. While while they are not required, oftentimes from the employer, right? Uh, in my mind, they're required to really make a good impression and to really get the job. I mean, I know I I'm a stickler kind of for uh, for cover letters. To me, if you don't submit a cover letter, it gives me the impression, well, how much do you really even want this job? Are you really even interested in this job? Because anyone who's really interested in a position should be willing to do a cover letter. I mean, that's just in, in my mind, you just, you want to make sure that that's the case because it is, it, I, I feel like it's vital, right? Um, the worst that's going to happen is if you, if you do come across somebody, you've done a cover letter and they don't look at the cover letter, or there's somebody who doesn't think that's you know, important, fine, you may have wasted a little time, right? But you don't want the opposite. People like me and others who are like, I can't believe they didn't do a cover letter. That's, you know, even if they didn't ask for it, it's, I think, really vital to, to provide um, a cover letter. So that's my stance on it. And these bullets here, uh, you know, it, it's really a mini sales presentation is how I look at it, right? It's your opportunity to sell yourself in regard to this job, to sell them on why are you the best candidate or why are you a great candidate and why should they select you, right? So that's super, super important. Um, you're the product, right? I mean, you look at it that way. You, you know, selling yourself, it's not selling out, it's selling yourself, like convincing them that you're a great candidate because of X, Y, Z and whatever it is that makes you such a great candidate you're able to show them that you know how to, um, you know, write well as well, because there's full sentences in a cover letter, as opposed to resumes that basically have your fragment sentences for a reason, right? It's just to kind of get the information out. But uh, so it's, it's good in, in that regard as well. Uh, they, I like to have clients think of it as, you know, think of the job search, right? Or, or a job posting as an employer saying, okay, we have a problem. We have this open position that we feel is valuable and we need to fill. So if you look at it like that, you can then think of yourself as the solution. You're the solution to that uh, situation. So think about how are you the solution? What do you bring specifically in regard to or, you know, in relation to what they're asking for? You know, if you are a very good candidate and you have met all of what, what they're looking for, or maybe you even exceed it, you are an exceptionally qualified candidate. So let them know that. Um, and that, and the cover letter is really the area where you get to do that. Okay. 
So uh, more on why cover letters are important. I just I included this one uh, from the other presentation because I think it does a good job of just explaining it. Number one, it sets you apart because the truth of the matter is many people don't do a cover letter if it's not required. Hopefully anyone who is submitting a, a resume, if the employer says submit a resume with a cover letter, they would do it, right? Not everyone does, but you should obviously do it. It's required if they ask for it, right? But even if it's not, it sets you apart because a lot of people aren't going to go to that extra effort. They're just going to work on their, their resume and they're going to, you know, slam it in and that's it. So it really can um, set you apart. Um, it can also, you know, give additional information, right, that's important for, for you and about you, right? Additional information, which it says, it says you know, here in, in like step three, right? The, or, or number three, the point, you know, provides, you know, a more uh, comprehensive and professional picture of you if you do it right, if you do it correctly. And it can allow you to explain sometimes those, for example, the gaps in your, you know, resume or, or things like that, which, you know, I did a whole session, not, you know, I think a week ago on, you know, how do you explain gaps on, you know, on your resume and in, you know, in the interview, right? So, so this is a, an opportunity for you to really, you know, put some of that down there as well so that they, they don't overlook you. But it also, like I said earlier, you know, it shows that you can actually string a paragraph together and make a logical argument, right? You can you can put several paragraphs together into a small, if you will, essay or letter in this case, right? And you know, make your point. So that's really important as well. Um, you know, most most positions they want people that can you know communicate well, right, orally and in in writing. And then it it allows you to really ask for action, right? And that's where we come into talking about that last paragraph really where you know you are you know right you, you want to ask for action you just don't want to say you know please look at this you know I hope you know thanks you know and, and leave it at that you want to have something like you know I would welcome the opportunity for an interview at which time we can further discuss my fill in the blank xyz skills and proven dedication to the field you know uh and then you know let them you know let them know that they can contact you so that's great right uh, so to, to make it easy and, and to really ask for it, you're showing that you really want it. You're not just, you know, firing off 20 resumes and not really caring about them. Okay. So all of those things are, are good as well. Great. So let's go ahead and, and go to the next one. This is this slide. I want to go through very quickly. Um, you know, really just formatting your, your cover letter, right? It's, it's important, uh, you know, think about like standard margins minimum. Now, before we go into the rest of this, I am a big advocate. I'm generally an advocate of having the cover letter as an attachment, just like your resume, because if you put it as the like in the resume it's, or in in the um, in the email itself, it can get funky with like formatting, right? Where there's all those lines that lead in, and then it goes on to a second page, and it just doesn't look very nice, right? Whereas if you if you do it as an attachment, it's going to look and attach it, you know, generally as a PDF, but you know, you know, attaching it there, it's going to actually shine more. It's going to look, and they can just see that there's an attachment, and they can easily open it. Right. Uh, so I'm I'm a fan of that. And then on that attachment, generally having, you know, your standard, you know, one inch margins, you know, around uh, and, you know, keeping it under a page is important as well. You know, one page max. You don't want to go on to the second page, generally not for a cover letter. Cover letters are supposed to be more crisp. You're not going to be able to explain everything about yourself, but the things that are really relevant. You should be able to make that case in less than a page is what I say. Uh, keep it to the more, uh, you know, the, the fonts. You want to avoid some of those ones that look so cool. You know, they look really uh, maybe very nice. And you think, oh, this looks more like script. I'll use this one. The, the problem is they're not as readable. And um, sometimes they can even mess up if there's, you know, the ATS, the applicant tracking systems that they might be using to kind of suss out keywords to see if you're going to get to the level where an actual person would would be reading your um, resume. So it can it can cause problems for that as well. So by the standard, I mean, like here you have some, I mean, you have the, you know, Calibri, Arial, Times, New Roman, there's, there's several, right? Um, and then just your, your paragraphs, right? Just, you know, be, be consistent in your formatting, how you do the paragraphs, you know, whether, you know, you do, you know, indentation or not, it, it totally is up to you. I generally just do the regular, not just everything flush, but having a, a, a blank line in between each of the 
each of the paragraphs so that it they pop a little more and that way they kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, like the uh, avoid the generic like templates you'll, you'll find. And there are some great templates online. Don't get me wrong, but like a, a general template where it's more like attaches a resume for the uh, fill in the blank like that, that completely, you know, generic one just doesn't show your interest. It just doesn't show. It's just seen as so generic. It's it's almost worse, I think, than than not doing one. So, um, keep those things in mind as we as we move on and we talk. But we're going to focus a lot, like I said, on on the hook. So starting the the letter, the the hook is at toward the beginning. But before you even get to the hook, you're going to do your salutation, right? Dear whoever is you know the 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 person. Ideally, you want to start that with you know dear Ms you know, Smith, whatever it is, whatever the, the employer's name is. Now I know you're saying, you're probably saying, well, they don't always give that. And how do I find that? And, and you're right. Sometimes you can't find it, but sometimes you can. And there's a couple different ways you can find it, right? If you have any contacts or you've met contacts or you do some, you know, a LinkedIn, you know, search to see if you might, you know, there might be somebody that knows somebody who works at that company or has worked at that company, they might be able to give you insight into the person's name, which is great if you can do it, right? Um, and, you know, I, I think Ms. MS period instead of Miss, even if you know they're not married, I am a huge fan of the MS period because I don't know anyone who's offended by that, but I do know people who are offended if they're called Miss and they are married. And I know other people who are offended by Mrs., even if, you know, if they are married, they prefer MS. So MS is, is MS period. It's just going to be your, your safest one for a female. Okay. Uh, if you can't find that, right. Sometimes you can do some Google research too online and you can find the HR, you know, person or, you know, whoever, but if you can't, sometimes it's a parent in there, maybe email, you can kind of suss it out from there or whatever. But if you can't, then maybe instead of saying what I really don't like is Dear sir or madam, absolutely not. And I don't like to whom it may concern. It's just, it's, it's so generic, right? So I'm not a fan of either of those. So if you can't find those, maybe it's, you know, dear hiring manager, dear XYZ company team, um, dear selection official, something like that is is better than, than the dear sir or madam or who it may concern. Okay, great. So that's just getting, getting into, um, into it. Yeah. And you don't want to be too informal. So you really don't want to like, you know, the hello, greetings, hi there, you know, is, is a little more informal than you want to be initially. So let's talk a little bit about what a hook is. Okay. Cause that's really what we're talking about here tonight is, you know, what, what is a hook? So it's something that draws in the reader. I mean, as you would imagine, a hook, right, with a fish, it's going to catch you a fish, right? It's going to bring that fish up. So like that, the analogy of that is more, it's going to hook the reader, i.e. employer in this case, right, and lure them in and draw them in and make them more interested in learning more about you um, than just going on and, and, you know, ignoring it. So hooks, when they're used effectively, can be they, they can be very helpful, right? And um, you generally, like I said, it's it's as part of the cover letter, but it's in the beginning, so you lead with that, right? So it's going to be um, generally in your in your first paragraph, right? The the hook, and there's a lot of different types, and I'm going to give you some examples of of different types uh, for for you to see. And, and then I'm happy to have anyone, if you have an example of one that you've thought of using or you've crafted and you're wondering if it's effective, please feel free to share that. I mean, you can write it in the chat box or, you know, um, write in the chat box to us that you're, you know, willing to say it and we'll just call on you and, and let you unmute. So you definitely can do that as well. So, but it is some kind of a story, right? It's a true story. I mean, it's a story, generally there's something that's going to hook. And this is true. You know, your hook and storytelling, storytelling's big on a hook, right? You've got to have, when you talk about the compelling story, right? You've got to have that hook at the beginning, something that really draws them in. Sometimes it's a statement that is just like a powerful, whoa, you know, kind of statement. And then they go through and do the, do the story. And then in the end, there's, there's some reference to that. It comes back to it. Right. And I think of this a lot. I don't know if anyone else has um, watched. I love the moth. 
um, the Moth Hour the, on NPR. It's just, it's amazing. And they just have great stories and storytelling and all of that. And and it you see that a lot in, in the ones who are featured because they're really good, right? And it's, uh, it's amazing. So um, anyway, so let's go on. So where do you find hook material? When you talk about, okay, we're supposed to use a hook. How am I supposed to come up with this hook, right? And there's, there's a couple, there's several areas that you might find things, right? On the employer website, you might be looking at the employer website and find something about, you know, their, you know, maybe it's a new direction or some kind of their, their, you know, taking or something that's, you know, really you're very committed to things like that, that you might be able to use for, you know, your own hook when you're, when you're making that, right? You might reference, you know, maybe you've talked to the employer at a past career fair, Right. Uh, or, you know, at some kind of, you know, meeting, an industry meeting that you're part of maybe some group and, and you were at, you know, that and were able to chat with them. You might reference that and, you know, back to that. And it may be a different person, but referencing the fact that, you know, you had, you know, visited with and were, you know, intrigued then and, and, and you know, now coming across blah, 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 whatever, you know, the, the opportunity or, you know, even more so and, you know, whatever you, you can really, you can make a hook with that. You could also talk about, yeah, a recent change in the organization. Maybe the organization has now made um, a, a conscious decision to do something different, right? And you, by, by researching that and then pointing that out, that is a great way to show them that like you've done your due diligence, that you are really passionate about this, that you're excited about the opportunity. You're like researching and, 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 you know, you're, you're into it, you're committed, right? Which is what you want to come across as, right? And then you have the, you know, trade industry publication, you know, information. Um, that's just another example, right? Like, you know, if, if you are an architect, you're going to want to, you know, be following some of the architectural digest types of, you know, magazines or industry, you know, trade publications, because from those, you're going to get some good information of like where things are going, the direction that you can then um, weave into, you know, your own, um, your own, uh, you know, hook, your own cover letter, your own interview, once you get the interview, right? So I have an example here that, you know, is from, you know, resume to referral.com. And you'll see if you just read this one, you know, reading construction, you know, the management, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, you can just read that actually. I don't need to actually read it um, for you, but, but it, what you'll see from this one is that, you know, there's this huge expansion that's taking place. And so by referencing that, you know, reading instruction management, essentially yesterday, I learned your company will undergo a blah, blah, blah expansion, you know, fantastic. Like it, It's showing them that you're up on what's happening with their business, right? And and need strong and growing businesses like yours, you're, you're complimenting them, right? Uh, you know, you're not doing it to the extent that it's just going to be seen as, oh, you're just laying it on too thick, you know, that type of thing. But then th what you would want to do from there is to is to go right into you know I am you know you know I you know you know I am you know uh, committed to X Y Z you know whatever your your kind of whatever your thing your data your 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 um, skills you know that type of you know that go with that hook right the strong businesses after that they're already like wow awesome it's like who doesn't like to receive a compliment right and then going in with how or why you're an excellent candidate for whatever position, you know, and that's why I was so excited to, you know, hear of, you know, learn of the XYZ position. I, you know, whatever you bring, I bring blah, blah, blah. And you go into that and you just, you make that case, right? You, you continue, you hooked them, then you're going to reel them in and, and talk about, you know, why you're a great candidate. So that's, an example, right, of, of hook material. You can find it in so many different areas, right? Um, yeah, so just, you've got to kind of do your due diligence of doing some research, that kind of thing. So uh, let's look here, another lead in, right? You know, you, you talk about, you know, the hook, right? It's it's really, a, it, you know, some people will call it a, a lead in, you know, a sentence, you know, like the opening that's going to help, you know, and that's, this is the, this is the example that I'd given there, right? But that can be your lead in for your, when you do your salutation, you know, dear, you know, Ms. Smith and, you know, whatever it is, right? And then you, reading construction management, that would be your first, like your lead in right away. 
So it's not waiting for another, um, like another sentence. You don't have to say, I'm writing to apply for the XYZ position as posted. I mean, that's your very traditional, right? But I'm talking more about kind of the more creative and that kind of, you know, drawing them in, right? First, you know, you're certainly going to have um, you know, on, you know, in this, you're, you're going to go into how you're qualified, but you don't have to have, you know, what, you know, why you're right, what position you're, you're applying for in the very first sentence, it could be in that second sentence, right? Now, what you do want to do, though, is in your cover letter, when you have a document, right, you want to make sure that your name, and the name of the position that you're applying for shows up in that, you know, is part of the title for that. So that it's really easy for them. You want to make life as easy for the HR folks as possible. That's your whole goal. Make things as easy as possible for them to hire you. And, and that's the, I think, one of the keys to success with getting hired, right? And so make, make that really clear with all of that as well. Great. Are there any questions that have come up yet? Um, Danielle, have you seen any in the chat box? I guess I'm going to put I'm going to see if there's um no I haven't seen any questions. Okay, no problem. That's fine. Great. All right, so let's keep going but please do just this is a, a plea for you to please put your questions into the chat box whatever questions you have about cover letter writing throw them in the in the chat box and we'll be sure to address those before the end here. Okay? So I want to actually show you, this is something that I had included in the regular, you know, cover letter um, one, just to kind of show you what the cover letter might, you know, look like, right? Up on the top, you have Sally Smith, an MBA. If she's an MBA, that's great. If you have that master's, put it there after the comma, that's great. You could certainly do, you know, MPH, you know, whatever. Uh, and then the contact information is, you know, on the, on the top and then the date, right? And then you scroll down and then you have that who it's to. So, you know, if you know the person's, you know, name, like I said, putting that and then, you know, dear Mr. John Doe, right. And then going right in. Now, what, I, why I wanted to actually include this was you look at this first paragraph and I know it's, it's a little bit light, but um, I'll read it here. After learning about your company's unique approach to online marketing from the June edition of Entrepreneur Magazine, I became very interested in the digital marketing position with your organization. I love that your organization values client privacy and fosters a team building environment. And then you go in and you go into that, the next paragraph, right? Please be assured that after you read, you know, it goes on from there, right? Uh, and, and goes into some more, you know, experiences, talks about, you know, eight years of advertising and promotional experience, five years as a social media expert, right? Um, or social media specialist, like that's all feeding into proving, right? Uh, high, prof you know, professional standards, excellent communication skills and enthusiasm are a perfect match for your organization. Like really just putting it out there, like what it is that you have. Uh, and, and I think they've done a really good, um, job in this example. So, uh, you know, and then the, the, the last paragraph in this one is more, you know, I would very much like to be a part of your team. You're stating it, you're putting yourself out there. And, and I like to ask for, you know, follow up. Now they say, please feel free to contact me with any questions. I, I might even just take out the feel free, you know, please contact me. And, and it may be instead of, you know, um, you know, with any questions, you know, please contact me to, to arrange an interview at which time we can further discuss my skills and passion for this position or whatever, something like that. You can really make that ask and, and that's what it's for, right? I mean, that's, that's what it's, what it's meant to be. So um, I would, I would clearly say uh, that's fine to do as well. So, and then warm regards is one of the ways to end it. I like that. It's a very warm yet professional way. Uh, sincerely, you know, in service, there, there's several different ones, right? Depending on the industry, I think too. Um, but warm regards is going to be, I think should be received pretty well by, by anyone. So any questions on, on this sample letter and the lead in in particular that, that we shared here, the, this, the first paragraph? that hook, if you will, that's what we're talking about with the cover letter is the hook. What's gonna reel them in? What's gonna keep them listening, okay? So 
uh, when when we talked about you know the anatomy of a stronger uh, cover letter, right? So so really that strong and creative you know opener versus and, and I'm not saying that this is terrible to have the I'm writing to apply for the X Y Z position. That's a very standard way to do it. Um, if if I were doing that, I would probably want to put a little more emphasis on you know I'm thrilled to apply for or I'm excited to apply for the X Y Z position as posted on. It's good to let them know where you heard about the position, right? They like to know that. It helps them know where to spend their marketing money. Um, yeah, so that can that can be helpful as well. Okay, and really your pitch. You know your your hook is that very first part, but then you're you're supplementing that, right? So it's generally you know the you know like maybe two paragraphs, right? Making that like case of why you're an exceptional candidate and what you bring and your other skills and how you've done this in the past, those kinds of things, right? And then you're you're closing, you know that that closing paragraph. Like I said, you know, in the last example, you know, I would welcome the opportunity to speak with you at an interview or, you know, whatever, further about my whatever uh, skills and experiences. So that's, that's your, I think, a typical way of, a good way of, of ending that kind of a cover letter. Okay. So more here, just, you know, and there's, there's a lot of print, but I, I wanted you to have this information at least and you could certainly you know review it later as well but, but your point is really your your as as i discussed in in my other session on on cover letters you know your you want to engage them right and and so it's a you're putting yourself out there as you know this you know this is a value proposition to you here's how I can help you meet XYZ goals, that type of thing, because that's what they want. They see, as I said, the, the opening that they have, it's a problem that they have this opening. They need somebody who can do whatever that job is supposed to be doing. So for you to be able to quickly jump in and, and you know, do that position, your whole goal is to tell them and, and show them how you are an excellent candidate and how you could help them reach XYZ goal or solve whatever problem, that type of thing. So that's just, you know, think of it in that mind frame. So your whole goal is to help convince them. It's a convincing argument, right? In a very professional, very positive way, why you would be an excellent candidate. Okay. So um, and, and like I said, you can, you can definitely find out a lot of information, right? Um, sh sharing any kind of, you know, story that you have, you know, that's proof positive, right? And the problem is you don't have a lot of space to tell a long story, right? But, but you can oftentimes, you know, allude to a reference quickly, you know, what you did in the past in a similar situation, right? So this one, you know, maybe it's, you know, last year I had the opportunity to, or I was, you know, whatever, the, the business, something happened, maybe the problem happened, and I was tasked with solving da 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 and whatever you did, you know, without, it came, came across without, went over without a hitch, whatever, something where you talk about what the issue was very briefly, right? Or what you did and, and, and the accomplishments that you, you had out of it. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's really what a cover letter is, right? It's that convincing argument and then a call to action to, to motivate them. And when I say call to action, it's action on behalf of the employer to give you this, the next chance, which is not the job generally, right? It isn't. It's the interview. You want to convince them. Your, your cover letter and your resume are all about convincing them that you deserve to be moved on to the stage to, to talk in an interview where they're going to actually be either in person or virtual these days, of course, but doing the, the interview. So that's what your whole goal with the cover letter and with the resume are to get through that stage and get, get into that interview where you're going to be able to wow them with your greatness and your wonderful you know, stories, including some of your Peace Corps stories and beyond and your resilience and all of those kinds of transferable skills that make you so valuable to employers. And, and that's why employers, many employers love, they just absolutely love RPCVs, right? Because you're resourceful, you're, you know, uh, driven, you're, you know, you don't need a lot of oftentimes handholding, right? You just kind of take the ball and run with it. Well, of course you do. That's what your Peace Corps service, you know, taught you to do generally. So, um, yeah. So let's see if we have any uh, questions coming in. Yes, Jeannie has a question. 
I have a question about the one page limit. If you are a mid-career professional and want to connect your past experiences with the job, but find it hard to keep it to a page, how do you narrow it down? Yeah. Jeannie, that, that is tough. I'm, I'm not one to say that cover letter writing is easy, but what I would say is take out, like when you look at like the essential, have, have you ever taken, I don't know if you've ever taken a, a class in, you know, um, communication or persuasive or whatever, when you're talking about communication, like cutting some of that, that fluff, not, not that it's, not that it's fluff, but, but really like sussing it down to what is the the like necessary, absolutely necessary content. And even the ways that you like write your sentences, sometimes you can take off, you know, some of those extra words to get it down. The truth of the matter is, Jeannie, you are not going to be able to cover, you know, you're a mid-career professional and that's great. There is no way in a one-page cover letter, you're going to be able to cover everything. But, but here's the good news. You're not supposed to. You don't have to. There's no obligation to. What you're going to do is in your resume, you're going to have more of the comprehensive, here's who I am. And the think of the cover letter as your opportunity to just pull and, and actually write compelling statements in sentences. Oh my goodness, right? Full sentences um, and paragraphs, right? That's going to help you. So, so your, your goal is to, to just suss it down and get the most important. So you're going to look at what are the most important skills that they're looking for. Generally, they're the ones that are at the top, right? A lot of times employers, I'll, I'll give you a little insight here. A lot of times employers will have like 20 things listed, right? Because they like, oh, let's just put everything under the kitchen sink, right? But the really, really important ones are oftentimes closer to the top. So what you might do is, you know, spend more time on those. And then the other ones that are like, maybe several are related to interpersonal communication skills or something like that, you are in teamwork, you could, uh, you could reference those, but more, you know, and, and maybe not reference, you maybe don't talk about absolutely every single uh, requirement of the job in your cover letter, because you don't necessarily have time, but you want to talk about the things that really make you stand out or make you exceptionally well qualified. Um, you could certainly have a statement, you know, in your cover letter, you know, I'm, you know, like about how, you know, I, I, you know, exceed the requirements, you know, I meet or exceed all of the requirements in the, you know, whatever you could, you could reference that. And then, then going into some of the examples, um, as, as kind of that proof is what I would say. Okay. I hope that, I hope that, uh, helps. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, wonderful. So let's see. Uh, there's another question. It looks like in here from Jessica. Would you say that the hook should always be something more about them versus something more about you? The examples shown seem more in the format. So I'm curious. Good question, Jessica. No, it could be something about you. Um, in fact, I think there's another um, couple of the of the examples, but it might be something, maybe this is a company that you have loved all your life. And, you know, even when you were a child, you were, you know, I, I remember looking online, you know, one of them was the Geico, you know, the Geico Gecko, right? You know, and, and, and this was a position with Geico and you could totally put that out there as a hook. You know, I have been whatever, you know, enamored by your company since I was five years old or whatever, 10 years old and, and first saw the Gecko, whatever, something where you, you could totally make a case of, you know, more what you, what you bring and, and, but, and, or what your, your hook could be that, you know, your past experience with it. And that's why I'm so compelled to apply for this opportunity, you know, given my, you know, proven blah, 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 you know, effective. There's, in fact, there's, there's many, I'm actually going to send you all some, uh, the follow-up and it's going to have, um, there's one that has, gosh, how many was it even? I want to say it was like, there were so many different, like ten, like, like samples of, of effective ones and, and for whatever, like different reasons. So one would be like past knowledge of, or experience, right? Love of passion for the, the organization. Another one might be, you know, uh, or it is, uh, you know, your something about your unique, you know, background with it. Or, or I, I remember vividly one was on the, um, glasses, uh, the, is it Warby, uh, I forget the, the name of it even, but they're one of the hip, you know, glasses, you know, makers and, and someone, you know, someone uh, used that, like, you know, the fact that they've been a fan for, you know, many years since they were young, that type of thing. So, yeah. Okay. So um, hold on just one second.
I am so sorry there. That's a little COVID moment on my end. My eight-year-old coming down to say goodnight. Okay, great. So I hope that that helps you. Um, there will be some more ones as well. And um, yes, yeah, so here, right here, this is it. This is what I was talking about. The starting with how much you love the company is one. There's a couple in there. So I'm gonna look at the chat box while you're reading that. Okay, so starting with how much you love the, the company. Yes, and this was the example I was talking about, the Warby Parkers, right? So, so um, you know, the, the person is basically saying how it stopped me in my, you know, it, you know, I've been a Warby glasses wearer for many years and have always been impressed by the way, you know, the company treats its customers. So that's showing that you know about the company. You are giving, you know, like an inside scoop that you you're already committed to it. It's not just, oh, I just applied to you because I need a job right? It's, you know, there's, there's more there. There's that commitment, which is going to generally make you a better employee, someone who's not going to just jump in and then jump out. So, all right. So, um, and then the other one um, that you see here, my, my last boss once told me that my, you know, phone, uh, my phone management skills are worthy of international hostage situations. <laughs> so, you know, just something that's going to, and that's kind of funny, right? And, and yet it's, it really gets across that, wow, okay, so, so this person really keeps their cool. This person it really, that, that uh, comparing it to that international hostage type of situation really sells the person um, on kind of, you know, what that means, the depth of that, which is really good, okay? Awesome. Um, we do have another question here from Rebecca. Should we be explaining gaps in employment in the cover letter? That is absolutely one thing that you can do, Rebecca, and you might choose to do that, right? It kind of depends, I think, on what the gap is and, you know, maybe what you're trying to, to um, you know, in explaining it, right? Number one, a gap around this time with COVID. And if you were an evacuee, for example, and, you know, you've been nine months now or 10 months, whatever, you know, with um, without, you know, employment, there's not a lot of need to, um, you know, explain, although it may be compelling, you know, if you are an evacuee, you know, I was, I will never forget, you know, whatever, you know, I was evacuated from, you know, whatever country you were in, uh, you know, in a moment's notice with no time to, you know, say goodbye to my community or pack or anything. And here I am in the States, you know, I mean, you know, you, I mean that that's a compelling, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe. I know that any RPCB I've talked to in non-RPCBs when they heard that people were all, you know, evacuated, right? Global evacuation, they were so like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine. And everyone wanted to help, right? So um, that, that might be, you know, a decent one in that regard, you know, bring, you know, information about that. Um, in other ones, it, it depends. I, you know, I, you certainly could, you know, I talked about in my other webinar on the gaps, I would refer you to the webinar that I did that um, is, I don't think it's up quite yet. We're, we're catching up on, um, we had a vacancy for some time and we're just catching up on getting those uh, posted, but I, you know, it will be up on, and maybe um, Danielle, maybe you can put the link to our global re-entry uh, playlist, uh, our YouTube channel, that's part of, uh, part of the MPCA one. And on there, it will, and it will post at the top or toward the top because it's a more recent one. I just did it. And um, go, go listen to that one because we talk a lot about different things like maybe taking time off to raise a family or unemployment, you know, that, you know, resulted from, you know, whatever. Uh, so there's, there's, there's definitely times if you, if, if you were, um, if, if, if somebody were let go, for example, I probably wouldn't explain it in the cover letter because you're going to have a lot better um, leverage to do that professionally when you can chat with them in a, in the actual interview. So I would just focus on really maybe, you know, a style of resume or your resume where you're really like focusing on what you bring and the skills right up front and getting those different skills, you know, you know, 
uh, key qualifications, that kind of thing, specialized skills right up front, and then um, planning to do that because they might ask you about it. They might ask you um, about different things like that, but that might be an example of when you wouldn't necessarily um, put it in. Okay. Great. So good. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate the link to the uh, past webinars. That's awesome. Uh, these are great questions coming in. Please keep them coming and I'll get to as many as I can. Um, here's another, um, starting with a strong attribute or accomplishment that's maybe relevant to the, to the you know, job. Like in this case, and this is kind of, you know, maybe somebody who, you know, you might be going for a job where you don't have the experience of being that person, but you definitely have that skill set, right? And, and that, that job, right? But you have that skill set. And so you're really wanting to kind of uh, bring the attention to that. You know, you might say, you know, something like this, you know, while you won't find the title community manager listed on my resume, I've actually been bringing people together online, uh, you know, on and off for three plus years as, you know, whatever. And, and, and explaining it there as your blog or as, as, you know, a board member position, that's a great one to get some of those kinds of, of skills and experiences, um, which is, I think, worthy of noting as well, right? When you're looking for jobs and if you're looking to change direction um, or you're looking to go into a job where you don't necessarily have a lot of experience in that particular job yet, or at least not paid experience, you can definitely up your kind of your competitiveness by even getting involved, you know, like in one of the many local, you know, your local affiliate groups with Peace Corps or other kinds of groups where they're always looking for volunteer board members, right? Where, you know, you might get experience. If you're the communication one, you might get experience doing ABC. They can oftentimes train you and help you, you know, with what you need to learn, you know, assisting with that so that you can, you can reference those kinds of skills because absolutely volunteer things that you do are just as important and and most companies will acknowledge that that's it, it's treated the same in federal government it's absolutely the same right doesn't matter what your pay was or if you were paid at all it matters what you did and the skill set that you got okay so um other questions coming in here if there are any i want to make sure to uh, we're at the point we have 15 minutes left technically and we are at the q a now so i definitely want to um allow any questions that that people have if you if you have any please um let me know here you can drop them in the chat box or like i said you can absolutely just you know maybe raise your hand or indicate in the chat box that you're willing to just um verbalize it and i'll be happy to just allow you you can unmute yourself and ask any brave soul want to stand up <laughs> okay great here we go Here's a good question coming in, a uh, new one. Wondering how, uh, Nora is asking, wondering how to stand out when you're applying for a position in a field you haven't worked in before, like higher ed. Okay, um, what are you coming from, Nora? What what kind of field are you coming from? I'm just I'm just trying to, in order to kind of help you with that, I'm, I'm just trying to think like, what's the, what's the field? Nonprofit. Okay. Okay. That's great. Uh, so yeah. So I would say, you know, you, when, when you're entering a field that like you don't have, so you don't have experience in the higher ed field, but you have, when you're looking at the jobs, you have the skill set that the jobs require, right. In terms of the requirements, required skills and right. Um, recommended. That's what it sounds like. And so in that case, you're going to be really talking about kind of that last example where it was like, I may not have this in my title and you may not want to go that way. You might just want to really promote how, you know, you've honed your ability to, da, 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 da. I don't know if it's a teaching position or maybe a support, you know, admin staff position that you're, you know, looking at, but whatever it is, looking at how you, um, the, the how you meet the skills that they're looking for doesn't matter if it's higher ed or not right just you know they, the, whatever and then you know if you're passionate about maybe you're passionate about higher ed or you were very involved maybe in your undergrad experience you know i know i, I was a um what do we call them a student ambassador which was basically the person that would give tours to the prospective students and their families and you know all of that and, you know, that, I mean, if that were the case for you, you know, you could, you know, explain, you know, about, you know, your passion for higher education and, and, you know, you might even reference, you know, serving as a student ambassador and, you know, and just, and, and I'd welcome the chance to return to that, you know, whatever environment, blah, blah, where, and, and you know, you just craft it from there. But 
that's what I would say is look for similarities and the skills that you've mastered in the nonprofit area and then translate that. And of course, your transferable skills, right? Um, let's just remember, I mean, you were, you were a Peace Corps volunteer. I don't know what program you were in, but we all did education in a sense. I mean, we may not have been all education like teachers in the classroom all the time, but almost all of us did more teaching of whatever way, right? It was, you know, training of trainers or teaching, you know, people in life skills or things like that. So you, you know, reference those kinds of things as well, your Peace Corps service, you know, and how it had a strong educational components and, you know, those kinds of things. Okay, great. All righty, let's see here. Let's see what else we have. Um, how many job examples should we give? Okay, by that, Rebecca, do you mean how many job examples? Like, I, I'm, I'm just, I need clarification. Do you, when, when you're trying to sell yourself, you, you might like clump several of your skills and abilities together and say, you know, my proven research and organizational skills have been, you know, well received in da 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 resulting in, I mean, you know what I mean? Like you might reference that you might, you know, talk about maybe some of the other skills that they have. I think it depends kind of on how many, how many skills they're looking for. Right. Um, you're going to draw from your different, you know, uh, jobs or, or from multiple, like you might say, you know, I have a total of three plus year. I have a total of over three years of specialized experience in X, Y, Z, both at the higher ed or at the whatever arena and or level and wherever else, if that makes sense. Okay. I hope that answers your question, but just let me know if not, and you can certainly stay on afterwards um, as well. So great. Uh, let's see, Danielle, have I missed any others here? I'm just looking at the chat box quickly. Um, is it better I, to, ex oh yeah, I see one from Jeannie. Is that what you're going to reference? Yes. And there's one from Tim as well. Okay, great. So Jeannie first, um, is it better to expand on a few relevant skills or give more examples and not go into details? Um, that's, I think it's a fine line between the two, right? You, you want to make the case for the skills that are relevant, what they're looking for, that you have those skills, right? Uh, so, so, and, 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 and you don't always want to just, you know, say, I have this and this, like, you know, it, you know, we, you know, when you say, you know, my, my, you know, proven X, Y, Z skills, you know, or, or have been refined through my work as da, 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 and whatever, and, and, you know, like you're, you're, you're giving, like you're talking about what the skill is and you're proving, how did you get it? You're not just saying, I am the best organizer. I have excellent, you know, research and organizational skills. I also have good this and that, like, that's not what you want to do. You need to be able to prove those and, and prove it very succinctly, not, you know, not for example, when I was here and I was there and then I went there and then I went there, right. You, you don't have time to go through all of it, but you might say on occasion, you know, um, you know, for example, in my da, 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 I utilize or in my whatever experience, I utilized my strong, you know, project management skills to develop and organize diverse da, 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 students in and, and you're just talking about like what it is there, right? So you're, you're definitely referencing, you're definitely proving to them that this is not, I'm not just saying I have this, I'm showing that I have it, right? So, uh, so I wouldn't want you to not go into any details. Like you need to at least reference in, in what kind of capacity that, you know, you learned this and, you know, that type of thing, because otherwise it's just, it can come across as fluff and that's not going to help you. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And then Tim, I think had a request maybe about chatting maybe a little bit, um, later, which I'm fine too. When we, when we end this recording, I usually stay on for a few minutes. So I'm happy to chat with you if, if you wanted to do that one. Uh, was that what you were wanting? Is that Danielle? Uh, yeah, he asked if uh, there are a few examples that you could email about the cover letter for the resume. Yeah, I, yep. And, and, and actually, um, Tim, I'm going to be sending you, you all several different links to some really good, like where there's one of them has, I think, I want to say it's like 32 and another one has like a hundred, you know, of, of like examples of how you can, you know, some hooks and, and how you can, you know, uh, share your experience and things like that. So you'll get, you'll get more than enough, I think, um, in what I'm going to be sharing with you. Awesome. Great. Well, I don't see any other ones. So I think what we're going to do is um, I think we will just go ahead and 
um, end the recording and then we can just, um, I can I can answer any questions that, that are there afterwards, okay? Thanks so much everyone for joining me tonight and make it a great day.